What's up everybody, TJ Dubay here with Jam Physics with another Tech Tips installment. And today we're gonna to be learning all about wheel durometers and how those affect us as a skater. So stay tuned because we're gonna be going over that really shortly. All right, so the other day I had somebody come up to me and ask me, what's the difference between a this wheel I really like the way it looks. It's a 92A. And I said, okay. And then, she, and then she said, well, what's the difference between this one and this other wheel? And, and I was like, okay. And I looked at the specs on them. And uh, one was a 92A and the other was, a, uh, was like a 101A. I entertained the idea because honestly, it was a great opportunity to teach somebody who's new to skating about how these things work. And of course it was kind of difficult to explain everything to her so I figured something out and this might actually help paint a better picture of how durometers affect every skater's performance on said wheels you ready here we go all right so in this demonstration I'm going to use two things to show you um, how durometers affect skating performance okay so these two things aren't gonna make sense but I promise they will eventually the first one is gonna be a guitar pick the second one is going to be this cute pink rubber band it doesn't have to be pink or even cute it just has to be elastic alright so if you can imagine this would be say a hundred and a hardness it probably isn't but let's just say for the sake of argument this is a hundred and one a okay so this is a hard wheel it's hard it's slick now the thing is is it's very slick on that surface because it's hard so because of that it's less resistance and uh, less drag and everything else which means less friction which means less traction your friction is your traction here now if I take this rubber band and I just kind of put it over my finger like this I put my finger down and I try to drag it that thing drags because it's it has elasticity which also when rubbed up against something produces friction and as we know friction causes traction so if you're into cars or anything like that uh, they make summer tires if you're not really too familiar with them but they make summer tires for cars and the difference in those is the compounds being softer and so when those compounds are softer that guarantees more traction however you know uh, the, the downside to that is uh, there's there's a, a lot less efficiency rolling as well which we'll get into in just a second now I forgot to throw in the disclaimer that today's discussion is only about wheel durometer it's not about wheel weights it's not about wheel size width, whatever aluminum hub versus nylon versus none it's not about any of that. We'll get to that another time. This is specifically about durometer. I like to try and keep everything down to just one lesson at a time. Now, this works across the board um, as far as the durometers go. Uh, softer being more grippy, and then of course harder being uh, you know more slick. Uh, and generally, uh, even though that's across the board, it's more pertinent in an indoor setting in an indoor setting now in an outdoor setting that dynamic changes just a little bit it's almost preferable to have a softer wheel in an outdoor setting the reason being super simple the one that nobody accounts for texture that's right texture Roller skating rinks typically do not have a textured floor, at least none that I've ever encountered, but outdoor surfaces do. And because of that, you would not want to run your 101A dance wheel on an outdoor surface because it would rattle the heck out of your feet and eventually they'd become numb and everything else. 
all vibration and shock would be transmitted to you. Plus, you know, you'd still have like less than zero traction. Your indoor wheels typically fall somewhere between about 89 to 101 A. Uh, but generally you'll see them about 91A up to 101A. Uh, there are some that actually go above that uh, scale. Outdoor wheels. Outdoor wheels normally come in between about 74A and 89A. And of course the most uh, important takeaway from this is the lower the number, the, the softer the wheel. The higher the number, the harder the wheel. Now, this is going to be the sensitive subject I don't always like to get into, but we're going to go ahead and go into it. Skater weight. Some people are very afraid to talk about this. Me, I personally don't care. It's science. It's just how it works. Look, if you're like me, I am 200 pounds. I'm actually in the ballpark of about 210 pounds. I used to skate about a 95A generally in almost every floor no matter how tight it got or anything of that, of the, of that sort it was always about a 95A wheel hardness. Now granted that was back when I weighed about 150 to 160 pounds on average. Now that I weigh about 210 pounds on a tight floor, a loose floor, whatever, I'm still skating on like a 96 to 98. And 96 is almost too soft, so about 97, 98. And the reason that is is simple. The heavier you are, the more the front face of the wheel will bunch up as it rolls. So, if you're skating and you push off, as you move, if it feels like it slows down almost instantaneously, chances are you have a wheel that is way too soft for you. Some people are very offended to have to talk about the weight thing and how that relates to wheel choices and everything else. And I know that sometimes the wheel choices, they look better, they're more aesthetically pleasing and, and this, that, and the other because whatever but at the same time you know it's all this sport is all about function over fashion whether anybody wants to admit that or not the truth is is that if it looks great but it works like crap it isn't worth it so if everybody has like these really cool looking wheels and everything and that's the hot thing to do and they don't work well for you then don't just do it because everybody else has it after all roller skating is about individuality no two setups should ever be the same but honestly i hope you learned something because that's what i'm here to do is teach people the stuff that they don't talk about in the books and they don't really discuss at the rinks a lot of the times people are just very interested in selling you things just because you like them not because you need them or selling you what you need but as usual it is your money and I'm not gonna tell you how to spend it I will however teach you what you need to know to select these things and as for my friend she wound up picking out a 95 a wheel which seemed to suit her weight her skating environment and her skating needs her t her style and everything else so with that being said if you like what you see be sure to hit the subscribe button, please tell a friend, like the video, and uh, let us know if there's anything we can cover in the near future. This is TJ from Jam Physics, happy skating!